Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. Today's reading picks up on some major astrological transits that are occurring. Some have been in place for a while, others are now coming into, into place to bring a very strong energy of, of combined energies of retrograde planets and some will start to ease off as of around about October and then others will not ease off until around about the beginning of 2022. And the inspiration for this reading came from my discovery recently of a wonderful YouTube channel called Esoteric Sky, which has a very erudite and insightful astrologer who also does tarot as well. And I was looking at some of his videos a few days ago and one of them was about the fact that from around about early to mid-September we will be in a situation where the six outer planets are all retrograde. So some have been retrograde for a while like Jupiter and Saturn, others are coming into being retrograde and as I said some of the energy of that starts to, to dissipate as planets start to move direct again in October and then others that doesn't happen until early next year. Uh, what happens with retrograde planets is it sort of brings things into, into sharp relief. We look at certain things, we have transformative energy, we have revelatory energy and so forth associated with retrograde planets. And Esoteric Sky did a very insightful, I think, analysis of what this looks like at the moment, given where the planets are, other astrological energies around at the moment. And what he said is is in a summary and I'm only doing a summary here I'd really suggest going and, and watching the video it's it's called six retrograde planets I believe um, on his site but if I can summarize it do the cliff notes version he said a couple of things firstly when there is that constellation of retrograde planets what tends to happen is that things from the past we reintroduce back into our life we consider what worked in the past, what we might want to do again. So he gave examples like, you know, we might have had a fitness regime that we used to do and for whatever reason we gave it up and we think, oh, actually, that really did help me feel better. I'm going to bring it back. Or it could be, I remember when I had a hairstyle that was X and, and you know what, I'm going to change it back to that again because I liked what it was like. So it can be very material like that. It can also be our attitudes to things, our philosophy, our beliefs, even old love coming back into your life, any of those sort of things. So there's a there's an energy around considering the past and working on what you might want to reintroduce and whether you reintroduce it exactly the way that it was or whether you reintroduce it in a modified form. And part of that is triggered, he was saying, by the fact that these sort of energies also bring in the archetype of the unknown. So when all this sort of really strong energy is operating, we often feel like we don't have all the information that we need. We often feel like we're in uncharted territory. So it's very human to then go back to patterns that worked before. And I guess the challenge and the question of this period of time is, are they the right patterns to go back to? Do we go back to them just as they were? Do we need to modify them if we reintroduce them to our lives? And he said that some of the things that challenge this is that because of other planetary energies, it may be hard to get empathy from others or even feel to feel full empathy for others during this period of time because it's there is a lot of shadow and unknown around it. And what's going on with this sort of energy is a larger transformation. So it seemed to me that energy is a really interesting one to look at with a pick a card reading because we can ask spirit about what are the sort of areas in your life which you can bring back or look at the past either reconfigured or pretty much as it was what could be returning into your life in this period of time by choice or just by other factors and how to you, do you best use that for your best transformation and evolution and highest good so and as I say, the energy of this lasts for quite a long time till it's all finally through. So this is a long range exercise about change in your life and about what you want to reintroduce, what you want to clarify in that period of the unknown and how you want that to set you up for the future. So it just seemed like a really good set of energy to, to do a reading on and I wanted to do it so that it was published just as we're heading into the point where it's all at its peak, which is sort of in the mid to to early part of September. So I wanted it ahead of that period of time. So that's why you're here. Hopefully that is of interest still and you would like to explore those sorts of energies. 
If so, the important thing is to connect to the right reading. To help with that on pile one, I'm using a third eye chakra placement stone, on pile two, a heart chakra placement stone, and on pile three, a throat chakra placement stone. As I always say when I use the placement stones, that does not mean that those are the topics under this. I don't know what's under these cards. It's really just that I think those sort of energies, energies about our third eye, our heart, and how we communicate and relate may be very much a part of what we reintroduce into our life and in what form and so forth. So that's why I chose those chakra stones. But, but they could, those sort of themes and others could turn up in all of the readings. However, hopefully the energies of them, the colours of them might help you choose, or you may have some other way where you choose what particular reading you want to go to, whether it's one, two or three. When you know, the timestamps are in the description box below. And if you need to pause the video to contemplate, you can. If you want to go to more than one reading, you can. There aren't really any fixed rules around this, you, you go where you feel drawn so that you get the messages that are meant for you. So with that much said, when you know which reading you want to go to, I'll see you there. Welcome Pile 1 to your reading. These cards are to represent the sort of energy that is around you during this period of time, the things that you may reintroduce or reconfigure in your life. And, and how to, to best use that energy for your greatest good. There is a very, very strong emphasis on relationship in this. There's almost two ways of reading it, I believe. The first one is literally, as I said, past things could be coming back in this energy. You literally could have someone, an ex, somebody from your past coming back, someone where there was emotional disappointment before. If that's the case, then... Spirit is saying one of two things. They're saying either that in reality that person comes back into your life, but really it may be that that energy is, has still fulfilled what it was meant to do. So they could come back in a different form. They could come back as a good friend, for instance, or they may come back and want to be in your life and you will actually realize that that's not where you want to be now. There's literally something here that suggests a new relationship coming in. And so that's why I'm feeling that if somebody from your past is coming back, they've either changed so much that that cycle is over and a new cycle can come in with them, or they're in a different form of relationship with you. But it really highlights what you really do want in a relationship. So it's almost like a contemplation of what didn't work in the past to help you work out what you want in the future. There's definitely a sense of a longer term relationship there of potentially even celebration around things like children, building a family and so forth with the Empress and with the Three of Cups or Three of Water there. And there's definitely emotional offers, emotional sort of fulfillment and, and, and feelings around all of this. But it seems to be from closing the door on something in the past, something new comes in. So, but because the energy of this is considering the past, if that fits, then if someone is coming back, then you would only let them back into your life, either in a different form or if they have significantly changed. So that would be the thing to really look at because there was real disappointment before and you did close the chapter on that. There is something I'm getting actually for some that if there is an ex hanging around you and there's a new relationship and you're not sure of the new relationship, then remember that energy that said that you are in the unknown and sometimes we return to what we know, whether it was right or wrong for us, whether we moved on from it for a reason or not, because it's better to us, it feels more secure than the unknown. If that's the case, I think Spirit is saying don't fall into that trap, that, that pattern you don't want to bring back into your life, whether, as I say, the person would have to have changed. And if not, if there's another person around you, then I think this is very much suggesting that that is the better option to be looking at, to be seeing where that could go and to not feel that this pattern is going to return. So for some of you, there is an ex around or there's still feelings around the regret around an ex, but really, you know, that's finished in that form. As I say, the person would have to change a lot and most people don't change that much, I guess, by one. So, so it's really about bringing in the new so that you can celebrate love and you can feel the abundance of love in a way that possibly you didn't in the past. But, but something in that past energy you're working through and you're transmuting and it may literally be, be because that person is around you or it could be because you don't want to repeat that pattern. So it's a good energy in many ways. I think it's very promising about a relationship and around 
going to the next level in a relationship. So if part of this is about you were kind of just dating and you really want more, you want to close that into something more, then this would suggest that could occur. So it could shift the relationship into something more. So that's the other side of this. If it's not an ex, if it's someone that's around you, it may be that a pattern of feeling unfulfilled you can move out of now, which is nice because it's done its time. I do think that it is very much saying for my pile one, though, be careful about reintroducing anything from the past when you have the world card there, because it suggests that what is past was done complete. That was a cycle. This is much more about bringing in the new. So I think there is a sense of don't, don't fall back into old patterns, old relationships, old habits in this period of time, because you left them for a reason whatever it is and there's something very emotional around this but there could also be around health for some of you with the empress there there could be things about diet exercise and so forth as well so the, the past did not really serve you there is something in the future so i think this is a little bit of a warning for you around this period to not just go back to what you used to do or the person you used to be with because that feels known there is something wonderful in the unknown coming for you there is something very transformative so let's ask for a little bit of clarification on each of these for you from Spirit, just to get a little bit more information about what they're advising you to do and what this is really about. Okay, I do think, pile one, if you've come to the right pile, this is a very clear message. This is definitely saying that the, the past, a past relationship, if it's still around you or patterns that are similar to that are still around you, it is time to free yourself from that. That period is over. The world is over. We've got the eight of wands, so that's moving freedom and so forth. You have been far too hard upon yourself about whatever this was. I think you blamed yourself in some way for a relationship not working. And that might be why you're at risk that if an ex came back that you would think, oh, well, you know, that, that, that was my fault. But in fact, what you did at that point, whether it was something that you feel even a bit guilty about potentially, it was the right thing to do because this, this energy, this past energy is not something that you're ultimately going to feel you can commit to. You're not going to be able to do that. Even if you want to kind of almost will yourself into doing it, you need to free yourself from that past energy. It's out of balance. It keeps you out of balance. And I think the other party there is, is somebody who kind of can manipulate you a bit with mind games. Whether they, they may not even mean to do it. I, I always want to be careful when I say this. I'm not necessarily saying you're dealing with someone sociopathic or anything like that, but I... But sometimes people from their own needs use their mind, use whatever tools they have. And this person will definitely use their tools of the mind to, to try and convince you to stay in the, the queen of air reverse, to feel self-critical and so forth and not to be liberated. But the energy around you is to be liberated, is to bring a better emotional pattern in. So this time is really more about clearing it out. So sometimes the energy around retrogrades are exactly that, clearing it out. So instead of bringing in the past, because we very humanly look for that when we're not sure what's coming in, that is not a firm foundation. Spirit is saying that there is so much abundance for you and so much love potentially, but sticking in this energy is not going to help you. Looking for something that is the same as before is not going to help you. If this is not about relationship, it's around creativity or around self-identity in some way, it's a bit like that maxim that doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. It doesn't, it won't be that. Just because it's known doesn't mean that it's right for you now. It's had its time and it's not your fault. I very much get the sense it's not your fault. But if you allow yourself to get drawn into that, it's going to be as unstable as it always was. And you're giving power potentially to this other person or to this pattern that doesn't work well with you. That is sort of a little bit, you know, abusive in terms of authority, power, mind games, that sort of thing. So I think that spirit is being very clear that this is around love, relationships and so forth. It's around, and if it's, if it's around trying to find the person to be with to have a family, don't look in the past. 
Do not look in the past. The future is much brighter. It's just a period of waiting. Have the patience of Saturn because you've done the work that you needed to do and you can free yourself in some way. So let's have a look at some of the cards, the oracle cards that we had. And then I'm going to actually use some others, particularly focusing, I think, on love and, and healing because this is what this is about. I've got a number of different oracles that, that were put aside for depending upon the issue. And this issue seems to be very much in relationship. But let's look at the general indications first. So firstly, I'm using a couple of cards from a different sort of astrological pack that uses constellations. And they have questions that relate to it. So we have Taurus firstly. And I won't try and bring this up because it, it really is almost impossible to read. But does it? this says, how does your rage imprison you? And then the question around Delphinus is, if you carry the mark of, oh, if we carry the mark of our ancestors, are they not immortal? Okay. So I think that this is asking you to have a think about what has and hasn't worked. It's very interesting, a sense of ancestors and rage and Saturn, Saturn in Greek and Roman mythology was, you know, like Kronos, like one of the original gods, and he ate his children rather than let go of power. So I think there's something in here around past relationships where there was a power struggle and possibly where you gave up too much power to someone. And so, and the rage that you may still feel from that may imprison you. This may be literally saying that you kind of repeat the pattern if you don't release it, even if this person isn't still around you, that you need to let go of that and any guilt that you felt in this because you need to let something new in. There's something about your ancestors in this. There's something around your family traditions. It may be that you were taught to put others first. It may be that you were taught that the only thing that is good for you is to be in a traditional family relationship or something. So it's about getting that right. Being immortal is good in some ways, but if it's connected to something that wasn't working for you, it's time is done. So I think that Spirit is saying in this period of time, that it's important for you to work out what from your past is going to work and what is just leftover rage that is imprisoning you. That's the decision to make. Okay, so let's get another astrological packs. So I'm very much focused on astrology as a starting point for this and even a tarot deck that's very astrologically oriented because this is the nature of this reading. So let's see what else in terms of astrology energy is around you. Okay, so we've got Scorpio and the Sun. You may be a Scorpio. Uh, you may have your Sun in Scorpio. You may also have your Sun in Taurus with Taurus there. Don't have to, but you, but you may have those planets or those, sorry, signs very strongly in your chart as well. Certainly there's a sense with Scorpio of getting a bit fixed sometimes and a little bit obsessive. So I think it, it, there is very much a warning here for you. I, I don't think using the energy of bringing in something the past. I think Spirit's being very clear about not fixating on that. The death, the tarot card is death around Scorpio. It is time to move on. You have, you have let go of that. You need to bring this new energy in. Then that allows you to pick up the sun energy of I am the sort of warmth and the moving forward to who you are. So so yes, I do think for many of you, you were in a pattern in a relationship before where you felt guilty in some way or you felt, and you were controlled in some way, whether it was meant to or not. And for some it may have been, but but whether it was meant to or not, but you felt guilty in, in disconnecting from it, possibly because you you feel like you've somehow let your family down or, or your culture down in some way, but you're meant to go to the depths with Scorpio to really see who you are and what you want so that you can then be who you are. So let's have a look at the feelings that are around you in this period of time. Wow, we got angry again and insecure. Okay, yeah. So so there is something. You've been hurt. You've been unfairly treated. You've been manipulated. There's something like that. Spirit's getting clearer and clearer about this. And and you will, if you come to that realization, particularly if you come to the realization that that really didn't work and you were, you were too hard on yourself and you were following the programming or patterning of others, you will probably feel angry. But this is saying you won't combust. You'll understand it. You'll take it through. You'll see this as a closing out pattern so that you can bring in the new. But 
but you may feel a bit insecure. And that's part of the energy of this. As I said at the beginning in the introduction, that sort of sense of the unknown, when you're moving into something new, you can feel insecure. That does not mean that it's the wrong thing to do to move into the new, because the new is more about who you are. So just embrace the imperfections that they say. Don't worry that much about that. It's not, it's not a competition to be the best person in a relationship. It's about being who you are in a relationship and bringing the right energy in. Not living up to maybe what your family wanted or others told you that has made you feel trapped and, and enraged at times. So the couple of decks that I want to use in particular... Um, are around healing and around love because of this. So I want to pull out a couple of cards from Spirit to help you with healing energy over this time because I do think that that is important for you. Patience. Okay. There's no way I can sugarcoat this, Pile 1. You are, you are dealing with quite a bit. You've been, I think you know that. You've been through quite a bit. And there is some sadness and there is some stuff that you need to let go of. And it's sometimes sadness is a good thing to just experience and to observe. Allow yourself to experience and observe that. You know, if you if you need to have you know a pity party, you need to sort of sit down with a bucket of ice cream and, and lots of movies, the tearjerker movies or whatever. Don't feel that you're being self-indulgent. Don't critique that. Allow yourself to feel that energy and let that go because this will take a bit of time. You are meant to bring in something much better, but you do need to clear this energy first. This is not a time to bring the past back. It's saying it over and over. So let's ask Spirit for a couple of cards about love, given that. If you do this work, if you take this time... And it may well be that it's when all these retrograde energies clear, so early 2022, that you find that the new energy really comes in. And this is a time for introspection and doing the work. Oh, God. Okay, I think this isn't talking about when you get through it. It's just, again, saying something has been happening that's not right. So making sure that the past was not right in some way so and it's and it's about power it's about control in some way distorted masculine energy it's not a gender thing it's about power and control and and all the sort of you see the bank the police the army so there's there was something out of whack and you need the boundary so it's just saying that again i think it's saying it because i think there is a real risk that you might go back into a past relationship because you feel that you did the wrong thing for some reason, but in actual fact, you need to understand what was really going on, feel the anger, feel the sadness and move through. So I want to pull an affirmation card for you. And then we're going to finish off with some Astro Chakra Synergy cards to just see what other energy can help you during this time. So firstly, an affirmation for this period of time for pile one, please. <laughs> Releasing toxic things helps you grow. So, so yeah, release. This is a, it's, this is not a good time to take things back in. That is that is the wrong wrong kind of energy. So, given that, let's have a look at the chakra cards that were under the the chakra placement stone as well too, just to see what else spirit can say is closing out to give you help in this period of time. Okay, so firstly, let's go to this. The sixth chakra, which is the third eye chakra intuition, it is showing that you have a very strong intuitive sense. So go into that. Don't go into the programming you've had. Go into your intuition and use that to communicate what you want. Use the mercury energy of communica communication and expand your knowledge in some way. This may be saying... Part one, that for some of you going to sort of a counsellor or a therapist or even looking into sort of healing modalities, things around relationship, relationship theory and so forth, all of this expanding your knowledge in some way to marry in with your intuition will help you communicate the boundaries that you need to communicate. This is all about finding yourself within the love energy of the heart chakra. You have lost that somehow. In, in compromise so it's about regaining that and using the power of Pluto for transformation to strengthen you so in the solar plexus chakra owning who you are saying who you are the, the, the primal I am so to speak that allows the right love to come to you and that to you to communicate on a much more profound level that brings that in 
So I do think the promise was there right from the beginning, pile one, of something much better coming for you, but I suspect it's after this period of time. This period of time is to really process that, have patience with yourself, go through the emotions, get a clearer sense of this, get rid of the guilt because this was not your fault. Go through anger if you need to go through anger. Clear that energy out. Work out what is imprisoning you and free yourself from that because there is meant to be love coming for you that is more about more true to who you are. You are meant to transform through this period of time. This is about regaining your power. If there was a primary message in this time for you, it is about you using the Plutonian energy to strengthen yourself and regain your power. Use whatever communication, information gathering, learning that can help you do that. All of this will bring you to love that is in alignment with your inner self. But it's not an easy period of time for you. It's not an easy thing to go through. And it's very simple in those times to slip back into past patterns. But I think Spirit's being very clear here with you about not doing that. Use these energies to clear out the past, not to bring it back. I hope that that's helpful. It is a very heavy message and it came over and over and over. So Spirit was being very clear about that. I hope that it resonated and it's helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you feel like sharing about this and it resonates, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. But beyond all of that, I do wish you well during this period of time. I have a lot of confidence that you can really come out of this shining. But it is it is not an easy journey. It's not an easy period of time. So I wish you well and I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome pile two to your reading. These cards are to give us a sense about what is the energy that is either unclear or might be returning into your life with these planetary energies in the in the heavens and then we will look with some clarification about spirits advice about what to deal with it. This does feel very much like it's around career work or something monetary, something material and something that has to do with status or power in some way. The reason I say that is that we've got the Knight of Earth, which is effectively the Knight of Pentacles, which is a classic work card, with the Seven of Pentacles reversed, which suggests maybe something from the past that didn't quite work out in terms of career is now coming into focus again. You're in a much stronger position for whatever this battle is because you have the Magician with Mercury, very strong communication. This feels like the past energy. It feels like you either were in a battle around status or power in a workplace or in your career, or you may indeed have spent quite a bit of your career around conflict in some way. With the five of wands, which is effectively kind of low level conflict, it's not necessarily fight to the death, but it is around conflict. And with the emperor reversed, it's around who controls the resources potentially, who controls the decision making and so forth. And it's around your career, around your vocation. So I do feel that many of you have worked in conflict in the past. Maybe are not so much at the moment, but there may be a similar sort of conflict, a similar sort of battle coming through for you, for you to work out what you want to commit to and also for you to see how far you have gone. So I feel that for part two, the thing from the past that's coming back is a suite of skills and an approach that is necessary. It's like you are once more in a position where either your role is about dealing with conflict, mediating conflict, managing conflict, or there is some sort of pattern from the past that is coming up again. Maybe you have progressed in your career and now you are in a leadership role, for instance, and you're having to mediate a conflict at another level. Or you might be someone who's in a position to help somebody else who's in conflict because of this pattern. But this has something to do with you becoming who you are, with you becoming the magician. Your capacity to, to go into conflict without blinking, to deal with it without blinking, and the skills that you have, even if it's not ultimately what you want to be your vacation. I don't think you're someone who would want to work in conflict all the time or be a, a mediator or whatever. If you are doing that, I think you want to take it somewhere else. You nevertheless have these natural skills. And there is something about this time, and it is probably in your career, or in something creative, something material, where a battle armor almost of the past is coming back. It's like you're putting the armor back on in some way, and you're you're you know sharpening your your sword, and you're getting ready for the battle because you you know how to do this, and you are so much more developed. So this is a period of time for you to take that to another level, to bring back those skills that you used before. 
It's also possible, I'm getting for some, that this is much more around something in terms of competition, like athleticism, the, com the connection between all the fiery energy and then the earth energy may be about someone, you may be someone who is you know, very good in a sport of some form or some form of athleticism, and there's a new opportunity to take that forward and, and to take the skills forward, using skills that you've done before, even potentially you learning a new sport for instance based on and using great skills that you've had before so that's a bit specific but it, it also picks up that kind of energy so for some of you this may be very much about physical health as well physical health physical stamina phys physical dexterity it certainly would suggest that if you want to learn something new if you want to go from being a baseballer to being a basketballer or something i'm not, I'm not really sporty there may not be a, a ease of shifting between those two but taking one type of skill set and putting it into a new context is possible as well around this particularly around things that are competitive in some way so you're either donning the armor for a new battle in some sort of workplace or some sort of community or political environment or something like that or you are taking physical skills and dexterity to a new level so that's pretty exciting so let's have a look and see what spirit wants to tell you to clarify some of this to give us a little bit more information about how best to use this time and this energy and what from the past it looks like you could very positively bring back okay this definitely has the feeling that, that you're going into some form of competition. It's feeling more like competition than conflict, though they, they, the two things can be a bit similar. If it's a conflict and you're a great debater, then it's that kind of thing. But you are definitely heading into a period of time where around your career or around something very physical or earthy or resource oriented, you are going to get a great deal of recognition. That is coming to you. And it's partly because you are very pragmatic now. You possibly in the past made decisions more from your heart and not so much from the pragmatics of, of what you were trying to achieve. You may, in fact, in the past with these three cards all reversed, had a tendency to, to not want to to push to the nth degree to really shine. It's almost like you, you were naturally competitive, but you felt like maybe you shouldn't do that. Or you're in a conflict situation and the way that you created the ease was to do it a bit from behind the scenes but this is saying that these skills are moving into a different level and you are going to get a lot of recognition if not during this period of time when all the planets are retrograde then certainly early in 2022 there is recognition coming to you and i think spirit wants you to not let the past things that didn't quite work out the way that you wanted to dampen your fire that's a risk for you at the moment those patterns of kind of giving up at the last minute or or you know wanting to share the the glory or whatever it was which is very lovely of you but wasn't necessarily really you know inspiring the fire that you needed and so forth and maybe made you feel a little bit lacking in hope now the star reverse could also be working here and could also be about being pragmatic again about what is the way to win this competition, to win this debate, being very, very pragmatic about it. In that case, with the Queen of Fire or Queen of Wands reversed, it could be saying that you are still sometimes in a situation, particularly if this is around conflict rather than competition and sport. So if it's around conflict, it may be saying that the pragmatics are still there. Some of what you learnt before, which was to to not make it as obvious that you were the person who was influencing something to actually come out with the outcome that you want. But even if that's the case in the past maybe you did that and other people got the credit for what you did in the future you are going to get the credit you have kind of learnt with that if that's the case if it's around physical sport competition in another way then i think it is saying that you do need to the one thing that spirit wants you to do is not kind of dampen your fire and and to be happy to take the accolades it's okay they are deserved you are the magician you are the skilled person in what you do and you've put the dedication into it therefore you deserve the recognition so maybe some of you have had a situation where you felt like you were kind of showing off or being you know kind of egotistical to to claim you know your skill but you're coming into a time where it's important to be able to do that and you will get it and you deserve to get it so what you're bringing back is that skill set but not bringing back the sort of natural self-effacing if it's not working for you so let's have a look at some of the 
cards, some of the oracle cards. So I'm starting with another deck that is astrologically oriented, but it's around constellations and it has questions. It's, it's really good in terms of what are the questions that spirit might want you to be contemplating in this time. So you've got Corona Borealis and Aquarius. So you may well be Aquarian or you may have Aquarius planets quite strongly. Um, a number of the retrograde planets are also in Aquarius, so it could be picking up that philosophical and transpersonal aspect to making these decisions. The questions, and I'm just going to read them because it's, it's very hard to actually read them on camera, I think. But what this says is, what if you were in ch charge of your life this whole time? And Aquarius's question to you is, how can you fill anyone else else's cup if yours is empty here yeah. this is spirit saying to you you need to own what you have and what you're bringing to the table you need to be able to accept that in yourself because if you don't if you don't take that recognition you really can't help the people it may even be that if you don't step into the arena either in a conflict or in the competition that other people will be lessened and not not be helped either because your energy is so beneficial if you just own it and go with it and you take the praise and the recognition and the gratitude that you deserve for what you're bringing to the table. Some more astrological cards, more traditional astrological cards. Let's see what else we have in terms of energy. Air, so they're air signs. So philosophy is very important to this. And mutable. Mutable is about being flexible. So yes, this is saying that you... You need to use these skills, these patterns, this competition, the skill, the dexterity in a different way to be flexible with that. And I think it's being flexible with yourself, getting a different philosophy, being able to, to be fair, because you're not fair enough to yourself. You're very, very fair to other people. And it particularly, like you're fair in competition, you're really honourable in competition. And if you are in a conflict-based role or you've been able to deal with conflict, you are very, very fair. And it's one of the reasons why you're very, very clever and able to do it and why you know you come across as the magician but you're not necessarily fair to yourself so let's see what feelings might be going through with you during this time <laughs> okay so firstly hateful i release heavy burdens on my heart there's something around competition or conflict for you that you that you are really good at dealing with it but it also, it, it does carry a heavy burden for you. So whether it's around the fear of ego or whether it's that you just kind of imbue yourself with so much of the energy if it's around conflict. So it's very important if this energy is coming back in and you are stepping up on that level in whatever way to just release any heavy burdens on your heart and release that kind of self-deprecation that you have as well too because it's not it's not a positive energy for you. It, it will It's kind of corrosive physically for you. This also says frisky, fun is my middle name. So yeah, lighten up a bit. <laughs> you, There's something about, have fun with the competition, have fun with the debating, have fun with any of that. But even more than that, get away from it sometimes. This is something to do with your career or, or a very strong vocation or passion in your life. So, But you need to lighten up and you need to get away from it because it's, you're, it's a very high order that you're working with, I think. So I want to use a deck that is around career and finance because i do feel as another oracle i do feel that a lot of this is around vocation in one form or another whether you are a brilliant sports person and you could go professional or are professional or whether it's that you work in conflict you're an amazing lawyer you're a community organizer whatever it might be so i just want to get some extra information around how to best use that kind of career and and financial sort of energy during this period of time for you. Okay, so firstly, there's an inter interesting kind of um, counterintuitive thing between these two, I think, because on one hand, it's saying fleeting funds, unknown source, being guided. So it definitely says you're protected around money. And so don't worry about that. There will be money. If you're not in a job at the moment, I'd say a job is coming. But it might be for a while the gig, or gig economy, or it might be something that is very much, as I say, in competition in sport or whatever. It depends upon what's going on with that at any given time of the year and, and so forth. 
So there's a bit of that, but it is saying that you will get money, that there is definitely support. So don't worry about money. If one of your issues around this is money, you don't need to worry about that. It is, however, saying that when you have contracts and paperwork, really make sure you know what you're signing. So if you are moving up a level, make sure you understand the role, make sure you understand the remuneration and so forth. The sorts of careers can be anything from sort of odd jobs or whatever. I don't think that that's right for this through to travel related areas. So maybe you're somewhere within the travel industry and, and at the moment there are obviously some challenges around travel and how to go through the business with that. So that could be what you're bringing the skill set in for. It's also writing, taking a class, education and law. I do think many of you may be in a legal profession or in some sort of mediation role, something like that, um, or maybe kind of employment negotiations, those sort of things. <clears throat> but it's saying that making sure that you have the facts will help you. So I want to pull an affirmation card and then we're going to have a look at the Astro Chakra cards to close out the reading. So Spirit, please give me the best affirmation that we can for Pile 2 in this period of time. If you want to be happy right now, want what you have. I, yeah, because there's this feeling in this pile too that, that, that you are very skilled and you can take this to a new level, but it is because it was very taxing, whether it's taxing because of it was in conflict or because of competition. There's a kind of a little bit of ambivalence I, I had the feeling up here, even though you are in a much better position. But it's like, just be happy about this. This is, you have been given these gifts for a reason and you are meant to take them to a much higher level, but you need to, to, to be comfortable with that and comfortable with the fact that you're better at something than other people, whatever it is. There is something you're superior at. There's something you're better at. And it's like, I do feel you feel a bit uncomfortable around that because you're so fair minded, but it's okay. You can be fair minded and, you know, pride is okay when it is justified. So allow yourself to be happy about that. So finishing off, let's have a look at some Astro Chakra Synergy cards just to see what other information or energy Spirit wants you to think about or have as you go through this period of time. Okay, there's a strong emphasis on creativity here. <clears throat> so you've got the second chakra twice. And that is, you know, whether it's sort of like... Some of this could be about, I suppose, starting a family or something like that. That could be the sort of like the passion and the, and the physical energy and possibly there'd been some, maybe you've had a family before and you're in a new relationship and it's, it's, it's doing that over in some way. Or you've tried before, it didn't quite happen, but now this energy is coming in. So I'm just saying that because of the creative sacral chakra showing up there. It wasn't really a strong sense I had across the board, but it could be for some people. For others, there is something creative about what you do with this creative and so all that fire energy, you know, even though I think that it's in a competitive environment, whatever this competition is, there's a creative energy and it's connecting Mars and the sun. Having Mars energy and the sun energy there is a bit like having sun conjunct, Mar conjunct, conjunct Mars. And that is something about the life path, which is about energy, which is about competition, which is, which is divine masculine sort of energy, that kind of thing around it. So again, I get that sporting feeling. I get that person who's a combatant in some way, but it is part of who you are. But this is saying creativity helps with that and that you'll be okay, that you can take on that. You can take on the inherent ambition that is part of Mars with the sun because you also have Jupiter in the fourth chakra about love. So that is about wisdom. You are generous. See, this is the thing. You're a very generous, very fair person, but you're not really fair to yourself. It just kept coming across. So Owning your ambition, not seeing it as something you should suppress or feel a little bit uncomfortable with. Owning it because it is really about the expression of who you are. You are not going to go off the rails. You are not going to become an egomaniac. You're not a narcissist. Just let any of that sort of thing go and allow yourself the wisdom of the generosity of what you have because there is a lot that you can do. You have these skills for a reason. You're meant to be a winner in one form or another. So I hope that that's helpful and it resonates for you pile two and I hope that you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if it does resonate and you have any comments on it I'd be fascinated to hear about it in the comments beyond that I hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading these cards are to give us a sense about what energies may be 
coming back into your consciousness or into your sort of thought processes or or transformational energy around you with all of these retrograde planets and what spirit is is saying to you about that <clears throat> and this is interesting this feels like a pattern that's repeated a number of times i think that if you've come to the right reading whatever the energy is around you that sort of is, is from the past and and still niggling at you it's not your first rodeo with that it's it's something that it has a feeling the, the first feeling i get looking at this is like a relationship that you you can neither fully bring into something new and what you want it to be nor let it go it's sort of a push pull we've got mars the tower reversed that is that is smaller changes to things and maybe what is required sometimes it is all that is required but there is a sense here because we have the four of pentacles reversed so there is a need to release something that you're holding tightly to and we have the ten of fire or ten of wands reversed that, that there is a need to release the energy and the burden of something there's i feel as though it's like keeping on trying to chip away at something isn't necessarily doing what is needed to to release the energy and either fix it up and reconcile it if it's a relationship or let it go if it's not it wouldn't surprise me if there's family implications here maybe even children with the empress there so that might be something that's that's complicating if, if it's around a relationship that you're trying to to bring into a new stage of being or even potentially trying to move away from there is if that's the case there is real love there too and i think that's part of the thing it's hard for either of you to let go because there's something that is truly there and when it's good it's very very good but when it's not it's really really hard to kind of deal with the energy coming out of it hard to really to to either let it go or to to move on so i think that this is about something it may be an ex that's around a lot it may be somebody that you're with but it's like you're always pushing and pulling against each other if it's around career it's like it's a, a work environment that had a lot of promise in some ways but is incredibly busy and it's hard for you to keep up with everything you feel as though you're, you're kind of going backwards and you can see change around and maybe you're worried about the change and you're trying to resist it maybe there's things going on in an organization that could make you feel is my job secure you know like if i work harder and harder can i keep the abundance and that sort of sense there and if that's the case you've got some very good relationships in the workplace but i think for most and we'll get it more of a sense when we clarify this feels more about the kind of classic relationship that you can't fully let go of but you can't fully commit to either so let's let's ask spirit to clarify a bit so we'll get a bit of a sense that is it really just about relationships or is it is for some of you this also about work career and that sort of thing as well because it's a tricky energy to deal with and it, particularly with that energy around the the retrograde planets where it's very easy to just fall into old patterns this definitely suggests that some changes need to happen that, that it, it's too much of a burden the way that it is at the moment pile three okay i think this is around relationship i mean i will try and talk about it around work as well too and we'll use cards for all to to just cover all the bases but i think for most this does look to me like with the hierophant reversed it's like that either the relationship has to shift a lot and be a lot less conventional to work or it may be something like a literal breakup if you've been married a divorce something like that there's something that something that's going to shift the degree of shift and the degree of conventionality and the degree of what you can hold on to is very much hanging in the balance at the moment and it looks as though you may surprise people with what your decision is the good news is that that's connected to the two of water so again it, it says that there is love there it may be with these cards together that there is something that that you and the other person can work at that is not as conventional but does actually do the change that you need and that's what surprises others that's probably its best way of doing it but the more that you and or your partner hang on to what you already have without going through the change the more that it reduces your strength of the relationship and your personal strength but you both you really do this really feels like something that it is there's a lot to this relationship it's just for some reason it's just really tricky to make it settle or work whether it's external or internal things it's it there is a lot there you're, you're scared of hurting each other um, you're scared of taking something to the next level 
So it feels like this is a period of time to really work out whether something of quite long standing can be changed and become something in and of itself or whether it is just draining you, you both regardless of however strong the connection might have been. But you do look like you are worried. You're a little bit scared to make that change. Now, if this is around career, it's the same thing. It's like you maybe need to move into a different environment, different industry, really do something very different and, and quirky and sudden, but you're not sure about your marketability at the moment. You're not sure about whether or not to take offers that might be coming to you or would you be work, walking out of the fire into the out of the frying pan into the fire, that kind of thing. So there's a push-pull energy here. And I would say, given that with the, the nature of the astrology around it, that, that you almost need to sit in that uncomfortable position and think about what's different and quirky that you could do, what, what might be unconventional, what are the different ways, different perspectives to look at this, so that you then have the courage to try something different or to finally say, no, I've actually looked at it from every perspective and every lens and, and I need to release the burden by accepting that that, that is of the past, not of the the future because until you do that it also stops with a page of water or page of cups reversed it stops any new emotional energy coming through to you so it's important that you've worked out whether you can resolve this situation or not the thing that makes it tricky is there's a lot to the situation it's not it's not a um, lightweight relationship by any means or if it's a workplace it's not one that you would naturally want to leave it's more maybe external pressures are occurring so let's have a look at some of the oracle cards. I'm starting with one that is also astrologically based, based on constellations, and it has questions associated with the constellations. So we have Perseus, and we have Coma Berenices, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So Perseus, the question for Perseus, and I'm not sure that that is readable, but it's given the chance to gaze into the void wouldn't you okay it's very hard to read this writing so just bear with me on that and then coma berenices is how are the stories we tell ourselves part of the larger collective narrative okay so this is saying you need to find something very different. You need to be able to look into the void and see something very different. Staying stuck where you are is staying stuck in a story that you're telling yourself that's creating the narrative. It may even be, you put those two things together and I get that sense of looking into the mirror there, into the void, that there is a way through this pile three. It's just very different with the night of air to what either of you are thinking about at the moment. And if this is in a workplace, again, the stories around, oh, doom and gloom and everything's going to go wrong are not true. That looking into almost the worst case scenario and then finding the way out, finding the, the quirky new different way of doing something of establishing a business in a different way or whatever is the way out but you have to be prepared to look into that and have to be prepared to understand how much you create your own reality by the stories that you tell yourself and and also if it's a, a relationship your partner is telling themselves as well so let's have a look at some other astrological energy around this the ninth house and the fifth house all right, so I do think with the fifth house, I think this is really doubling down on most of this is probably around romantic relationships and so forth. The planet that rules the, the fifth house is the sun, so it's important to be true to yourself in this, and that's very much the energy around this anyway, when in the void. And remember, there is that unknown that you're dealing with at the moment. This is, this is why you tend to revert, but if you're comfortable looking to the void and understanding the power of narrative, you can do something to fix your new direction and so forth but there's a lot of drama around it there's romance there's love all of that sort of stuff and it's true there is a true love connection here if it's a relationship that is push and pull there is actually love there whether or not that's enough is another matter but there is definitely love there the ninth house is ruled by the planet jupiter so that's lucky that gives a benefic en energy around this for you its ruling sign is Sagittarius, so that's about freedom and difference and doing something that's a bit freer and different. Um, but it does show uh, that some of the answer to this is looking into your spirituality, your higher self, your higher mind, the law, morals, ethics. There's something in that around it. And if this is around a workplace, then that definitely is suggesting, you know, look at the fine print of contracts, look at 
what's required on that kind of legal level when you're working out how to resolve the issue. Let's have a look at how you're feeling during all of this. Okay, so firstly, curious, I follow my intuition. That's a good energy around the Perseus, around looking into the void, around doing things differently. But you also are worried about being manipulated. I will not be controlled. So maybe there's something in this relationship where the push-pull is around who wins and who, who dominates this, or it feels like that. Again, I think with the Knight of Air, there's a possibility there's a completely different way of reframing the relationship if that's the case. But at the end, if you think, once you've gone into this and looked at it, that what's going on is a manipulation, then that starts to give you the decision about what to do with it. So I do think this is primarily around love, but I'm going to pull cards from a pack around love and I'm also going to pull a couple from a career one just in case any of this is around a workplace where there is there is some distress and 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 resistance to change but we'll start firstly with a couple of cards around love Okay, so firstly we've got the silver waterfall and to me that always feels like clearing away energy clearing away what isn't working. I think it's I think it's got some promise. I do. I mean, I don't think it's simple, but I think there's a promise of clearing away some of this drama and so forth that's around it and clearing away the narrative so that you can see something more clearly. Whatever the outcome is, so spiritual maturity is part of this. So being true to who you are, being true spiritually and making that decision because if this isn't, even if there is love in the relationship, if it's not the right connection ultimately, if it's push-pull for a reason, then the mature thing is to understand that and maybe become friends and move on. If it is that it's really just been push-pull because of different narratives and different attitudes and so forth, and you could actually find that way through it, then that's a very mature thing as well. So it's not saying whether or not you're going to stay together. It's saying this is a period of time to work that out. But it's you've been working on this for a long time, if that's right. Now let's also... Pull a couple of cards around career and finances just to see whether there's anything there as well for my pile three. Okay. So this starts with out of control. I do think that for some people, and I only think it's some, there may be this may be about a work situation and whether or not this is the right work situation for you. The good news is the spiral suggests that you're going to climb the ladder and go upwards out of this. Once you've worked out that you do change and you don't hang on too strongly to what is going on at the moment, you relieve some of the burdens that you have, you have an upwardly mobile thing. It's interesting it says revisiting a job when we had that thing about maybe something from the past. It may be that you get an offer or you think about a, a role that you were in before and you move into that and then that actually moves a career trajectory for you but there's definitely stuff about promotion and connections it's it's getting out of the pattern of sticking where you are it's also got masks so secret stash save pennies finding money theft i don't get a sense around theft around you here it's more around possibly this is a transition and it's a good idea to save your money and make sure that the resources are not the thing that makes you make a decision that you're making the decision about what's going to take you on an upward trajectory this is also talking about hidden potential and things that are unknown at this point. If this is around career, if, if for people that this relates to career, it is saying that at the moment, the narrative that you're playing yourself over and over, it's keeping you stuck somewhere. It may well be that a career path that you were on before or a different career path in some way that requires you to wear a new mask, a new persona, a new way of being is the thing that actually takes you forward. So that brings the silver waterfall in that sense, but not so much about love, more around growth and building. So it could be either of those. I want to pull an affirmation card for you, and then we're going to have a look at the Astro Chakra cards to close out the reading. So Spirit, please give me the most appropriate affirmation. And this is just flipped over. You don't have to stand in the shadows of others. <clears throat> so that definitely has a feeling of making your own mark around career in particular and moving forward and moving up the ladder so it might be saying that yes there are quite a few people that that's more about that than love but it also says that part of this love scenario is about making sure that things are in balance and that you are both equally partners in this clear of that clear of 
it may even be that for some of you, you the push pull has been because everybody else around you has had an opinion about this relationship and where you should be relative to it. And so you know it needs to shift a bit, but it's hard to do that. And this is saying don't stand in the shadow of others. So let's see what the Astro Chakra cards were for you for this period of time. Okay, so we start with the third chakra, which is <clears throat> the solar plexus, so around your self-esteem. And this is saying you have Jupiter there, the benefic, the wisdom and so forth about honour. So you're a very honourable person. This might be part of what's pushing and pulling you as well. Again, you might need to be a bit quirky and a little bit unconventional to move forward, but you can still be honourable when you do it. But you do need to claim your your share of the pie, so to speak, with Jupiter in terms of being who you are in the world. There is something around survival around this. So for some of you, it may, it, it either is that it's actually about work or it's that there are financial implications, family implications, financial implications. If there was a divorce, there's things around that. So what this chakra is saying is going into the love nature, going into what was good in the relationship helps you feel safe even if you do separate out remembering that and communicating that is important and then surrendering to whatever the change is not resisting it so much going into your uh, third eye chakra to let intuition in and surrender with neptune letting inspiration something new something quirky a different way of doing things it keeps saying it you're making this too hard for yourself and so probably is the other person or people if it's in a workplace there is a different way of doing this and it may mean moving on to something else or it may mean changing the patterns and just releasing the past. It could be either. So pile three, it's not an easy energy, I have to say, but then I think probably all these retrograde planets don't tend to bring ease with them, but they bring very transformative and very positive energies ultimately. I do think that there is a way through to either the right relationship for you or the right job, but you do need to to honor yourself you do need to surrender to the need for change and you need to balance your sense of feeling safe with a sense of love love for your job love for the people around you love for a partner whatever it might be i hope that that resonates for you and it's helpful over this period if so please like the video and subscribe and if it does resonate and you've got comments on it i'd love to hear about them in the comments below beyond that i hope to see you in future readings